Hey guys, welcome to Individual Investor. Price to earnings ratio or PE ratio is one of the price multiples that is most important for company valuations. There's a lot of debate around what is the optimal PE ratio, especially in today's market, given the sky high company valuations. Benjamin Graham in the Intelligent Investor book outlines precisely his thought process around finding justifiable and reasonable PE ratios. And it all has to do with corporate bond yields. In this video, I will break down for you the relationship between corporate bond yields and PE ratios. The theory behind Graham's price to earnings ratio comes from the notion that as an investor, if you have money to invest, there's two places where you can put it, stocks or bonds. The goal of investing in the first place is to put that money to work and generate a return on your investment. Stocks or companies generate earnings, while bonds produce a yield thanks to the coupon payments. As an investor, when you own shares of a company, you will also own a piece of the earnings, which are the earnings per share or EPS. And as a bondholder, you will get payments called coupons or interest as a percentage of the principal that you paid for the bond. If we add some numbers here, you can think of the price to earnings ratio as the earnings yield on your initial investment when you buy shares. So the earnings yield formula given the P ratio equals to one divided by the P ratio multiplied by 100. So if we have a P E ratio of 20, this will be in theory comparable to a bond yield of 5%. And this simple logic is what Benjamin Graham follows when he explains the optimal PE ratio for defensive investors. He says, our basic recommendation is that the stock portfolio when acquired should have an overall earnings price ratio, the reverse of the PE ratio, at least as high as the current high grade bond rate. This would mean a PE ratio no higher than 13.3 against a AA bond yield of 7.5%. So building on that logic, here we have the table with different bond yield percentages. We get that for a PE of 13.3, a corresponding bond yield is 7.5%. For a PE of 20, the bond yield would be 5%. And for a PE of 40, the bond yield would be 2.5% and so on, you get the idea. Now, real quick here, guys, if you're liking this video, please, I would appreciate if you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. Thanks in advance and let's move on. In today's market, the existing corporate AA bond yield is around 1.94%, which means that a corresponding price in these conditions would equal to roughly 50 times earnings, which is quite high. If we look at historical average PE ratios for the S&P 500, we can see that they have been trending up in recent years, especially during the ball run that started in 2020. If we dig deeper into the effects or implications of having low bond yields, we have that not only investors prefer to invest more in stocks, but it is also cheaper for companies to borrow money at low interest rates, which they can use to either invest in their own growth or to stay in business during difficult times. This causes the stock prices to go up, which contribute with high price to earnings ratios. Remember that you should also compare P ratios of similar companies with a specific average from the sectors and industries that they operate in. High P E ratios are not necessarily bad as long as you can justify the high valuation. If a company is expected to grow substantially for many years and it has a competitive advantage or an economic moat around it and it has a top-notch quality of management and many of the other positive attributes then a high price multiple might be justifiable warren buffett himself paid a high price for coca-cola back in the 80s in comparison to market averages at the time and we know the rest of the story and how that investment turned out Thank you guys for joining me today. I'll be looking forward to seeing you next time.